Hello everyone and welcome to our first Waterline Pro 5.4 tutorial. Now with this version of Waterline we're changing a couple of workflows so we'll be adding a little bit of a couple of short videos like this one where we kind of go over the changes and uh, how you can work around them and stuff. So for the first one what we're what we've changed is the way that nanite meshes interact with waterline or simulate dynamic water. Now to start us off, we just have like a very basic, almost default kind of map and we've just dropped a waterline ocean actor. And what we want to do now is just uh, add a basic actor and have it simulate. Now, for example, we have a normal sphere and we just add it to our level. What we're going to do now quickly is just set our camera tracker to track actor and the actor to track we're going to select our sphere this will allow us to run simulate without any errors and we can pause and everything will be fine now to actually get this sphere to simulate water what we need to do is same as before we need to enable generate overlap events we need to also have it uh, give it the actor Oops, let's just search for the actor tag on and generally we should be good let's see if it's uh, working out of the box uh, actually let's set it to movable as well and uh, yeah we can see some water being simulated which is pretty good uh, but what happens if we enable nanite well we've just enabled it so let's see it again and uh, oh yeah no more simulation. So we kind of made this change for a number of reasons in terms of performance and actual ease of use, uh, because as of Unreal Engine 5.1, nanite meshes are either always rendered in scene captures or never rendered. So our whole approach by checking an actor velocity as to whether or not it should simulate waves is just not working with this. But no worries, because there's a way around this. Now, first of all, let's go over just a couple of settings that we've introduced with our latest waterline update. Now, these are going to be available in all actors. So ocean, lake and localized and infinite water sim actors. And these are basically uh, these two sets where we scroll all the way to the bottom. Now we have the water buoyancy channels. We'll be going over these in like a separate uh, video, but uh, they work pretty much the same as the water simulation channel. And what these do is they basically tell us which object channel is going to be simulating our water. Now we have our main ones for static, uh, world dynamic, uh, pawn. You generally want to have the pawn on because that'll be your player. And to have it on, it must be set to overlap. If you don't want pawns, just set to ignore. The more of these are set to ignore, the better. We also have uh, three custom channels, which you can do if, you have, uh, if you've added them to your project settings they'll appear in the drop down menu. Now, if you've seen our starter getting started tutorial with Waterline, you will see that we have already created one such channel custom and that's called Waterline. It shows up here. Uh, don't use that. This channel should be for all intents and purposes ignored for this part here. But for example, we've set our wor di world dynamic to ignore. And if we go here now, uh, whoops, let's just go with our non nanite approach. And we can see that now it is not generating anything. Cool. So just something that we need to know. Also on the mesh itself, the collision should be, uh, we can set it to custom. It's always a nice approach just so we can change the object type to world dynamic. And then we can select our ocean actor and set, well, world dynamic, we want it to overlap. And once we do that, we have our quite subtle, but yeah, there we go, simulation. But what happens if you have a very detailed mesh like a ship or something and you want to have nanite and you want to have uh, dynamic water simulation? Well, no worry, that's very much possible. So what we're going to do is make sure nanite is disabled on this. We're going to delete it. Uh, oh, actually, let's just leave this on the level because we're kind of using it for uh, our simulation purposes in our waterline actor, the whole track actor thing we set up here so we're just gonna move this to the side so it doesn't get in the way and we're gonna create a very basic blueprint class we're gonna call it actor and let's go call it nanite sim as it already exists okay nanite s cool 
And now we have our blueprint sort of menu. And what we're going to do is add a static mesh. Let's grab that. And we're going to call this the normal one. We're going to set it as the scene root. This doesn't really matter much. But in our case, let's just grab our sphere normal, the non nanite one. And what we need to do now is select the very top uh, parameter here and under details let's give it the actor tag so on so it will always generate waves make sure to have selected the top bit because if you select your static mesh you'll be changing the component tag and for this one you want the actor tag on so cool we have it done uh, next up let's just quickly go over the generate overlap events is already on we're gonna look for the collisions now collision presets we want to set it to custom world dynamic and for this one you really only need a query only um, but the default setting is also fine so we can just change it right now next up it should overlap with waterline and i think we're pretty much good so we're just gonna quickly save this and drop this into our scene Ooh, one more thing to check is that this is set to movable. Great. And now when we press play, we are simulating water. So that's good. But then again, this is all kind of pointless because we already have this functionality. Ah, but what happens when we enable uh, Nanite? Well, we just saw that it didn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to be extra sneaky. We're going to uh, duplicate this and we're going to call it our, or actually better, to actually create a new one. So static mesh. Ah, because we've had it selected, it automatically made it. Perfect. And uh, it's a child to the normal one, and it's using Nanite. And honestly, with this one's collision settings, we really don't care. But right now we kind of have two meshes that are overlapping and we don't really want that. So what we're going to do is select the normal one and we're going to search for a setting called just type in scene and visible in scene captures only. We're going to enable this and what's going to happen now is our normal regular mesh that's interacting with the water is invisible but will make waves whereas our nanite mesh will not be making waves but will be the one that's visible. So we get the best of both worlds now. Now, when we go into play, we have a nanite mesh that's simulating water. Uh, let's see if we can go into the nanite visualization, quick overview, and there we go. This is our ball. Whoops. If we actually go into simulation, there we go. Now, a couple of things that are quite cool about this approach is that, yes, it is a bit of extra work, but generally low poly objects like uh, debris or crates or stuff like that won't really be needing nanites. So you don't really need to set this up because they're pretty low poly to begin with. However, for larger ships, what you could actually do is for your normal one sphere, use a much lower poly hull blocker object or something. And yeah, use that to generate waves and save a little bit of performance. Something else you could do that's quite cool is, uh, let's see, maybe if we really, yeah, is offset them. So for example, if we have a ship and we're not quite happy with the outline of the hull that we're making, we're just gonna grab the nanite and move it slightly higher, for example. And this normal one uh, will be slightly below and interacting in a sort of different outline with the water. So these are a couple of cool things that you can really fine tune and sort of art direct the overall shape that your vessels, crates or debris are going to leave behind. So yeah, this is pretty much the first of a couple of videos that we'll be doing. And uh, yeah, go make awesome things.